Hello everybody. In this Python tutorial we're going to go over several different ways that you can sort data. A few notes before we get started. Python lists have a built-in sort method that modifies the list in place. There is also a sorted built-in function that builds a new sorted list from an iterable. Also, the sort method is only defined for lists. The sorted function accepts any iterable. Both sort and sorted have a key parameter to specify a function to be called on each list element prior to making comparisons. The value of the key parameter should be a function that takes a single argument and returns a key to use for sorting purposes. And we'll go over an example of how to use the key parameter here in just a little bit. So for our first example, we're going to use the sort method. So here we have a list of data elements, the numbers 1 through 10, and they're out of order as you can see. Now one thing to note, if you try to display this list here using a print statement and you put the list inside the print statement round brackets and try to use the sort function, you're actually going to get none printed to the console. Okay, So you can see over here that it prints out none. So let's comment that out. If you want to go ahead and display the list in sorted fashion, go ahead and sort the list first, like this, and then go ahead and put the list in the print statement. So let's select our code and run it. And you can see over here in the console, now we have our sorted list data elements. For our next example, let's use the sorted function. So here we have another list. We've called this list two. It actually has the same data elements as list one. However, you're gonna notice that in this case, we can go ahead and put the sorted function inside of a print to display it. So we use our print inside the round brackets, we put our sorted function, and then inside the sorted function round brackets, we put our list number two. So if we select this and run it, you can see we get our list number two data elements back in sorted fashion. Now let's say you wanted these lists, list one and two, sorted in reverse fashion. One way to do that is to just simply put this syntax here, reverse equals true, inside your function round brackets. So let's go ahead and do that for our sort function. If we select the code and run it, we get list number one and its data elements back in reverse sorted fashion. We can go ahead and do the same thing using our sorted function. In order to do that, let's just put a comma after the list number two, and then put in reverse equals true. We select that code and run it. We get list number two back with the elements sorted in reverse. So for our next few examples, we're going to go over how to use the key parameter that we talked about up here. Okay, so to start we created a list of data here and inside of our list we put several tuples and inside each tuple we have planets and corresponding data for each of those planets. Okay, so for example inside each tuple the data elements are as follows. We have the planet name, the number or position away from the Sun, then the number of moons, and then whether that planet has rings or not. For our first tuple, we have Mercury. Mercury is the first planet away from the Sun. It has zero moons and no rings. Let's skip down to Jupiter. Obviously, Jupiter is the name. Jupiter is the fifth planet from the Sun, has 67 moons, and has rings. Okay, so that's the setup of our data. It's a set of tuples inside of a list, and from left to right inside each tuple, we have the name, position, or number away from the Sun, number of moons, and rings. Now let's say that we wanted to take this data here and sort it. Well, one way to do that is here. Okay, so we've created a variable. We've assigned our sorted function. Inside the sorted function round brackets, we put the data elements that we want to sort. In this case, it's the planets list. Then we put a comma and we use our key. Now remember up here, we said that both sort and sorted have a key parameter to specify a function to be called on each list element prior to making comparisons. The value of the key parameter should be a function that takes a single argument and returns a key to use for sorting purposes. So in this case, we have assigned a lambda function to our key. The lambda function will work with an argument that we've titled moons. Then after the colon, we decide what we want to do with that lambda argument. And in this case, we're going to use the argument and then the subscript syntax 
to access the second index of our data list here. Okay, so the names would be index zero. Even though that's the first element in our tuple, it's index zero. The number away from the sun would be index one. The number of moons would be index two. And the rings would be index three. Okay, so the data elements are one, two, three, four, but the indexes are zero, one, two, three. So when we put two in right here, we count by index. So we start with the names, that's zero. The number from the sun, that would be one. And the moons would be two. So this is gonna go ahead and sort by the number of moons for each planet. Okay, so let's go ahead and select our code here. Let's display it to the console. And you can see over here, we have each of our tuples. So this is the tuple for Mercury. This is the tuple for Venus. This is the tuple for Earth and the corresponding information for each of those planets. Now, if you look at index two or the third element in the tuple, those are our moons. So you'll notice that this list has been sorted by the number of moons. So it goes zero, zero, one, two, 14, 27, 62, 67. Okay, moving on, you can also use the key parameter with classes. So here we've gone ahead and we've created a class called planet class. We use our init to allow us to create the objects for the planet, the sun, the moons, and the rings. And then this code here will allow us to use a string representation to display the data and the information. Okay, so then here we created a variable and we assigned our class objects. Okay, so basically this data set here is the same as this data set here except for in this case, we've gone ahead and we've used a class and we've created objects, okay? Now, if we want to sort this data, we can do something very similar to what we did in this example here, where we just used a list and inside we put tuples with our data elements. So in this case, where we've used a class to create our objects, we went ahead and created our variable. We called it class planets sort we assigned our sorted function. Inside the sorted function round brackets, we specify what we want to sort. That would be the planet objects. That would be all of this data here. And then we assigned our lambda function to our key, just like we did up here. Now, one thing you'll notice that's different is how we've used our lambda number argument or parameter. And in this case, we use the argument number with our moon's data from our class. So if we select this code here and run it, you can see over here in the console, we have all of our planets and its corresponding information. And once again, it's been sorted by the number of moons. Okay, so if you go here, you can see the moons go 0, 0, 1, 2, 14, 27, 62, 67. Now, if you wanted to, you could sort those moons in reverse. Just simply go back to your sorted function put a comma after your key and lambda function and then put in reverse equals true. Let's go ahead and select our code and run it. And you can see over here in the console, we have our data displayed, but now it's been sorted with the moons in reverse. So it's 67, 62, 27, 14, 2, 1, 0, 0. Okay, let's move on to our next few examples. Inside the operator module, we have a couple functions that will help us to sort data. So in this case, we went ahead and we imported the operator module, and that will allow us to use the item getter function and the attributes getter function. Okay, so let's go over some examples. We're going to go ahead and use our previous planets data sets. Here we have created a variable titled variable1. We have assigned our sorted function. Inside the sorted function round brackets, we put the data set that we want to sort, which is the planets, and that's this data here. Then we use the key parameter and we assign our item getter function. Now in this case, we went ahead and we used the operator module. Then we use a dot to access the item getter function. And inside the item getter function round brackets, we put the index for the item that we want to sort by. In this case, we used index number two. Now again, since the data set starts with index zero, that would be the names. Index one would be the number or position away from the sun, and index two would be the number of moons. 
So let's go ahead and select our data and run it. And you can see over here in the console, we get our planet's data back sorted by the number of moons. That's index two or the third element in each tuple. So it's zero, zero, one, two, 14, 27, 62, 67. Okay, so that's an example using the item getter function. You can do something very similar, but using the class objects, using the attributes getter function here. Now the main difference in this example here versus this example is obviously that we're going to be using the class objects, but you'll also notice that inside the attributes getter function, instead of putting in an index like we did here, we put in index two, we can actually put in the actual name of the data element that we want to sort by. So in this case, we use planet, and that would be the planet name. So let's go ahead and select this and run it. And you can see over here in the console, we get our data back for the planets sorted alphabetically by the planet name. So it goes Earth, Jupiter, Mars, Mercury, Neptune, Saturn, Uranus, Venus. Now remember in this example, inside the sorted function, we're using the planet objects, which we created here. And these objects are created from our planet class here. Okay, so moving on to our next example. In this example, we're going to sort based on multiple levels. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to sort by rings, whether the planet has rings or not, and then by the planet name alphabetically. So we created our variable three. We assigned our sorted function. Inside the sorted function, round brackets, we put what we want to sort, which is the planet's data. That's this data here. Then we assign the item getter function to our key. Remember we use the operator module, a dot to access the item getter function. And then inside the item getter function round brackets, we put the indexes that we want to sort by and in order. So first we want to sort by the rings and that's the fourth element in the data set or the third index. So if we go back up to our data set, you can see index zero, one, two, three, you can see that's the data element that says whether the planet has rings or not. Okay, so that's why we put three right here. And then we use index zero to sort by the planet name. So if we select this and run it, over here in the console, you can see our output. First, we sorted by whether it has rings or not. So Earth, Mars, Mercury, and Venus have no rings. Jupiter, Neptune, Saturn, and Uranus have rings. And then between those two, rings and no rings, the planets have been sorted alphabetically. Okay, so for our next example here, this is very similar to this example. But again, instead of using the item getter and indexes, we're using the attributes getter and the actual names of the data elements. And this example here uses the objects from our class. So let's go ahead and select this and run it. And you can see we get our planets and all of their information sorted first by rings, whether they have them or not, and then by the planet name alphabetical. Okay, so for our next example, we're gonna go over how to sort a dictionary. Now, very often, dictionaries are not sorted and they are left unordered. However, if you ever need to sort a dictionary, this is one way that you can do it. Okay, so we've created our dictionary with the key value pairs. The key is the letter, and the value is the number. Okay, so we have E5, A1, C3, D4, and B2. Now to sort this, we're gonna use a for loop, and we're gonna say for I in, we're gonna use the sorted function, and inside the sorted function, we're gonna put our dictionary, okay? Then we're gonna use a print to display the key here and the value here. Okay, so the I will display the key, and then we access the dictionary through var5, and inside the subscript syntax, we put another I, and that will display the value. So you can see our dictionary is out of order here. Now, if we select this and run it, over here in the console, you can see now we have our dictionary values displayed in order. Okay, so for our last example, we're gonna show you how to pull in some data from a CSV file, a comma separated values file, and then how to display it in a sorted fashion based on one of the data elements.
Okay, so the first thing we did is we imported the CSV library or module, then we created a variable here called open CSV data. Then we used open and inside the open round brackets, we declare the name of the file with its extension. And the name of the file that we're going to be using is called sorting CSV data dot CSV. Now, one thing to note, make sure that your file is put in your working directory or a path that your editor or IDE can use and get to so it can access the file. Here we type out an R in single quotes to read the data and I believe you can actually leave this out and it will go ahead and default to that. Here we've created a variable called CSV data. We go ahead and access our CSV module. We use a dot to access the reader and this will help us to pull in the data and read it. And inside the reader round brackets, we put our variable name OpenCSVData, which we created here. We went ahead and declared a delimiter with the comma. And then next, we create our variable with the sorted data. Okay. Now, one thing you're going to notice is that this code right here doesn't do exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and finish going through the code, and then we'll show you a way to fix it. So the last thing we did is we created a for loop to loop through all of our data and then print out that data here. OK, so let's go ahead and select our code and run it. And you're going to see our data over here in the console. And what we did is in this line of code here, we used our sorted function. We sorted on our CSV data and then we assigned the item getter function to the key to sort on index one which would actually be the second column of our data. So let's go ahead and show you a copy of what the data looks like. So this is what our data looks like. We have a column of months and then a column of numbers corresponding to each of those months. So this column here would be the zero index and this would be the one index. Okay, so we wanted to sort the data on this column here, smallest to largest. Now when we used this code, you'll notice that it sorted everything for the most part but this number here is out of order. Now I'm sure there's a way to fix that, but one way to fix it is to use a lambda instead of the item getter function. So let's go ahead and comment that out there and let's use the sorted function where we assign a lambda to the key. Okay, so let's go over this in a little bit more detail. We created our variable. We assigned the sorted function. Inside the sorted function round brackets, we tell the sorted function what data we want to sort. That's the CSV data that we created here. Then we assign our lambda to the key. The lambda function will work with a number argument. Then after the colon, we decide what we want to do with the number argument. And we want to use the number to access the first index row, which would be these numbers here. And then make sure you cast that as an int. And that has to do with how the data is pulled in. I believe it's pulled in as a string. And in order to get that to sort correctly, you want to cast it as an int. So let's go ahead and select all of our code. And notice that March is the second one, it's out of order. So now if we run this, you can see here, now the data is sorted correctly by the numbers here, from smallest to largest. So it goes 10, 12, 12, 14, 33, 33, 45, 55, 56, 88, 90, 102. Okay, so that's all we have for this Python tutorial on how to sort data. We will be doing many more Python tutorials in the near future. Join us for those, and we'll see you next time.